A legal showdown now, one underway today in Washington over whether the state of Texas can require people to show photo identification in order to vote. State officials say the rule would help prevent voter fraud. But Justice Department officials blocked the law earlier this year, saying, frankly, it discriminates against minorities who are said to be less likely to have photo identification in the first place. Opponents also argue it will disenfranchise other legitimate voters, including the poor and the elderly. Current Texas law allows people to show voter registration card or a utility bill. The new rule requires a government-issued photo card. It also allows handgun licenses, but not student IDs. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano joins us now with some details on what this is. You know, one side would argue, Judge Napolitano, that this is very good. This would be a very good thing for Republicans because the kinds of people who are more likely to vote Democratic are the kinds of people I just listed who would be, in the words of some Democrats, disenfranchised. Well, if that is the reason for the statute, then the courts will probably invalidate it because the statute has to be not only neutral on its face, but neutral in its application. It can't be written with the purpose of, of um, uh, enhancing the vote for one side over the other. Let me give you both arguments. The argument in favor of the statute is, look, you need to show an ID to walk into a federal government building and a state government building. You need to show an ID to get on a plane. You should be able to show an ID in order to vote so as to prevent voting. Voter fraud. That's the argument of the state of Texas. The federal government's argument is we voting is a fundamental liberty, just like speaking on a street corner. You don't need an ID to speak. You don't need, need an ID to buy gas. And if you do need an ID, what's wrong with the one you already have? Why do you have to travel a great distance and only use the one that the state of Texas issues? So those are the questions confronting the three federal judges in Washington, D.C., even as we speak. So how do you think this will go down, Judge, from your basis of reading it and, and knowing these justices? My, my, my gut is that it will be invalidated, and I think it will be invalidated because I believe that the Justice Department will be able to show that this will have an unfair burden on the elderly, the poor, and the minorities. Not that it was intended to do so, but it will have that practical effect. And if the court finds that, it will invalidate it. And then the old rule of a utility bill or anything you have showing where you live will be sufficient for this November's election. I think it'll make a big difference in this uh, in the election that's coming up here. I mean, it's not as if Texas is very much in doubt, is it? I don't think it will make a difference in, in Texas. It might make a difference in some local races, but not in the presidential race uh, in Texas, which, as you know, has gone for Republicans pretty solidly uh, for, for many generations. All right, Judge, it's nice to see you. Thank you. Nice to see you. I wish I were with you. I want to see the Yankees star in that game tomorrow night. It, it would be fun, especially from the Budweiser patio. Mmm, <laughs> beer. Judge, Judge, thanks. The IRS is gearing up for its new role as health care cop. That's right. The agency whose main responsibility is, of course, to collect taxes cheerfully from all of us will soon be in charge of enforcing the president's health care mandate. Mandy. But how can it police a bill that comes with no civil or criminal penalties for those who refuse to pay? A lot of people asking that question, so let's ask Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano. Good to see you, Judge. Good to see you guys. Even when we talk about unpleasant matters, it's good to see you. Like taxes? <laughs> right. All right, so, so how can they enforce this, the IRS, if you choose not to buy health insurance and you pay the tax instead? Well, the IRS can put a lien on your property. Initially, it can add to your tax bill. It can send you a threatening letter saying we're going to put the lien uh, on your property. If the government owes you money, it can deduct from the refund that you owe the government because of your failure to pay this tax. So it has some of the tools available that it uses in the collection of ordinary income tax. But there are some things, Judge, that the IRS simply cannot do. Correct. Because uh, Mrs. Pelosi and company wanted unanimity amongst the Democrats when the law was enacted, and because some conservative Democrats, interestingly, some of them are not going to the Democratic National Convention this year, busy. insisted that some tools be taken away from the IRS, some were. so. The IRS cannot seek an indictment, a criminal uh, charge, for those who willfully refuse to pay this. The IRS cannot seize bank accounts or dock wages. The IRS cannot um, add to add penalties for your failure to pay. The only thing that keeps adding is interest, and the interest is established by the statute. Okay, so some conservative Democrats were against those things. Are those things 
Uh, are the IRS able to do those things in general? Yes. Just in regular? Okay. Oh, sure, sure. If you owe the, if, if you file a tax return and it, acknowledge what you owe and don't pay it, the IRS can take it right out of your bank account without notice to you. But cannot do that for this so-called so, so tax. If, Judge, so if people are looking at this and they think, oh, there really aren't many teeth in this law, they really can't get my money, they'll eventually get the money. Well, sure, they'll eventually get the money. If they put a lien on your house yeah. and you don't sell the house for 20 years and the interest keeps building, oh my goodness. and then when you do sell the house, a lot of the proceeds from the sale are going right to the IRS and not to you. No but kidding. it depends on who the president is because maybe that president would not tell the IRS to do that. There are a lot of tools that would be available to a president who disagreed with this law that could dull its negative effects, one of which would be to say to the IRS, go collect income taxes and leave these, uh, leave these people alone. Here's the scary part. The law provides for 16,000 new IRS agents right, exactly. and it funds them for the first four years. Right, and they're going to need something to do, so they might come back and uh, haunt us all. All right, Judge, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. My pleasure, guys. All right. Well, this next story talks a little bit about Big Brother. Apparently, Big Brother is not only watching, but he may be listening, too, as the feds try to get their hands on more and more cell phone records, sometimes without warrants. Now, these surveillance requests are surging to a whopping 1.3 million last year alone. Now, we should mention these records are new, so there's not a lot of comparisons to be made. But that said, here's some context. AT&T alone says it's seen law enforcement requests more than double since 2007. Judge Andrew Napolitano is here. He's a Fox News senior judicial analyst. I'll get to your text messages and emails in a moment, Judge. But apparently, you, <laughs> there's a lack of legal clarity over this about what our cell phone provider service providers can provide to law enforcement what does that mean a lack of legal clarity before 9 11 before the patriot act before the legislation that the federal government enacted after the patriot act that made it easier for the fbi to get their hands on our records without search warrants the standard the legal standard was the same everywhere in the country for local, state, and federal law enforcement. You wanted to listen to somebody's phone calls or you wanted a record of their phone calls from the phone company. You went to a judge and you presented evidence that demonstrated to the judge that that person probably committed a crime and that evidence for the crime was probably contained in the records you wanted. How long did that normally take, that process? Well, that process can take a, a couple of minutes. I can tell you personally from having been there that I issued search warrants from my living room at 3 in the morning. One of my colleagues issued a search warrant from the back of a motorcycle at 3 o'clock on a Saturday afternoon. Judges sit 24-7 to hear these emergency applications. There's a record of what the police are looking for, so there can't be a fishing expedition, and the police are required to produce some evidence before judges sign the search warrants. Much of that regrettably changed after 9-11. Because the Patriot Act let FBI agents and other federal agents write their own search warrants, bypassing federal judges, and a lot of local and state law enforcement sort of got jealous of that federal authority, and so they began peppering judges to lower the standards a little bit to make it easier for them to listen to so people's phone calls. So let me stop you there. A 911 call center believes, if they believe there's an immediate threat to somebody's life, right now can bypass a prosecutor or a judge when it comes to law enforcement. That's one of the things that I've read. Just, and that's why the timing issue, I ask you about that, because there's a certain immediacy with the GPS on our phones and our communication. Before you respond to that, let me just mention law enforcement. The chief of police in Roanoke, Virginia, says this. If a victim goes missing and they had a cell phone with GPS technology, would you as a loved one want us to have, have to wait for a subpoena, have to wait for the court, even though we know that your relative could be in dire straits? What do you say well, to that? No one wants their relatives to come within a whisker of death while the niceties of the law are being complied with. That's why judges sit 24-7. I don't know this police chief, and I'm unfamiliar with the system in Roanoke, Virginia. But even in a, in a, in a system as busy as New York, you can get, which is, which is the most complex and highly populated system in the country, you can get a search warrant within minutes if you know what you're doing. I would also say that we're not going to lessen the protections of the Constitution in order to make the police work a little bit easier. The police work harder, they'll save lives, they'll comply with the Constitution they have sworn to uphold. What's the risk if we bypass that step and continue to do so? A, a very slippery slope. The risk will be what laws will we let the police break next? Now, I know you're dying to see, see what my, my last email was. Dear Jenna. Uh-huh. 
Oh, I want to see it for myself. Okay. John, this is what it says. XOXO. If uh, I had a nickel for how many of these emails I got from Judge Napolitano. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it really... Do you blame me? But would, <laughs> you wouldn't mind if the police saw this. National television just saw this. Well, you have just given up my right <laughs> to privacy. Whether I wanted to do it or not. You better take the phone back. You never know what's going to happen. Next, <laughs> I might take a look at more of those emails, Judge. It, it, it is a serious issue. We run the risk of going down the slippery slope of losing, with every tick of the clock, more of our rights It'll, if the police don't abide by the Constitution. Interesting to see some of that power in a 911 call center in a local police agency rather than through a judge. And we'll talk more about this as we find out more. Judge, thank you. You're gonna Thanks reply, for that You're going to reply to this we'll email? Right. I'm, I'm in the middle of a show, Judge. <laughs> Internet privacy now, or lack thereof, and Google is reportedly set to pay a record fine to settle charges that it violated people's privacy online. The feds say Google recently tracked the internet habits of millions of folks who use the Safari web browser, even when their settings were supposed to be blocking it. Safari comes standard with Apple computers as well as iPhones and iPads. Google announced it immediately halted the secret tracking soon after the story broke back in February. So they got caught and then they stopped. Well, now the Wall Street Journal, which our parent company owns, quotes unnamed officials who say, Google will settle with the Federal Trade Commission to the tune of $22.5 million. And if it's true, that would be the biggest penalty that agency has ever slapped on any one company. A Google spokeswoman says personal information was never at risk during that secret tracking. Let's take that to the judge. Fox News senior judicial analyst Judge Andrew Napolitano was with us. And once again, violation of privacy rights. It's, it just seems never ending. Well, it, it's more than that, Shep, as you uh, indicated in the introduction to this uh, to this segment Google agreed in writing in an agreement approved by a federal judge last October not to do this again and if the Wall Street Journal report is to be believed and Google has not yet denied it and the report is now eight hours old they've been caught violating not only privacy rights not only federal law but their own contract with the Federal Trade Commission that's why they agreed to cough up twenty three and a half million dollars now that is a lot of money in absolute terms oh, to, Google, to Google it, it they earn it in about fifteen or twenty minutes well I, I isn't there something anyone can do or have these companies just gotten so big I mean people worried about the government on top of us could, could we worry about these companies once and for all? Yes, we do need to worry about the companies because the companies have employed very sophisticated means. Th this case, Shep, is based upon findings of deception that Google deceived its own customers into signing agreements that permitted Google to allow other of its customers to track the original customers. So it not only deceived the Federal Trade Commission, it deceived the people who sign up for Gmail. That's why the fine should be larger, and that's why the money collected should not go to the Federal Treasury, but it should go to the people whose privacy rights were violated by Google. So this is a lose-lose. Google gets to pay a pittance, and the feds get to have more money to waste on federal projects, and the people who really suffered here, those whose privacy rights were violated, don't get a nickel out of this, Shep. Could, couldn't there be some sort of class action lawsuits, the real victims of this Google malfeasance? Couldn't they rise up together somehow? Yes, there could be a class action. The agreement with the Federal Trade Commission does not prohibit one, and Google's lawyers very appropriately negotiated phrases in there by which Google does not admit to any liability. So a class action would start from a baseline of zero in which the plaintiff's lawyers who would make the most money in a class action would have to prove the case before a federal judge. But I will tell you this, if they go before the federal judge who approved this settlement with Google, they will find a very receptive audience because she was not happy with what the Federal Trade Commission found out about Google. You are right. They can be as dangerous to our privacy as the federal government itself can be. Rise up, power to the people. Judge Napolitano, thank you. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble, Shep. <laughs> oh, you're already in trouble. We're both always in trouble. Thank you, Judge. You're welcome. Well, San Bernardino to become the third California city now to file for bankruptcy in less than one month. What's going on here? It's so broke. City officials are saying it can't make its August 15th payroll. So far, no word on the city voiding union contracts. But you know this goes. 
Will that be the case to the judge? Um, here we go again. Huh, yes, here we go again. A, a federal judge, a federal bankruptcy judge, will probably void those union contracts, even though the Constitution says, you know, you judge do? You have to present your filing, right, to a judge. Yes, you present. And, and, and have you ever had to do this? What, what well, do you look for? No, these are federal judges, federal bankruptcy judges. They okay. do just bankruptcy work. There are no juries. You can get a jury in bankruptcy court, but for discrete issues that don't apply gotcha. here. They basically look at the obligations and the assets, and then they do what's fair. But they have extraordinary authority. They can reform and modify a long-term collective bargaining agreement. Just as they could reform or modify the contract with the guy who cuts the grass in front of City Hall, they could reform or modify a contract for hundreds of police or thousands of but teachers. Wouldn't that be very tempting for any mayor or municipality or city or governor well, to look at this and say, gee, this is one way to dodge my contract? That's why the federal judge has to make sure it's a genuine bankruptcy that their assets are so low, their income so reduced, and their obligations so great that, most they, cities in this country. that they they can justify seeking protection from their uh, creditors. But whoever caused this, whether it was an overly rich, overly generous union agreement, unions electing politicians who then give them contracts that are overly generous at the expense of the taxpayers or whether it's just reduced tax revenue because people lost their jobs and real estate uh, has, has collapsed whatever it is it's in the hands of a single federal judge to resolve and though there is an appeal these are these are uh, decisions that are rarely overturned on appeal those union members will be stuck with the decision this federal judge makes, and she or he will make it very soon, like in a couple of weeks. You know what I worry about? Is it be careful what you wish for those who want to abrogate these contracts. When you start mucking around with contract law and contracts and agreements, for whatever reason, justified or no, um, that's a slippery slope, is it not? It, it is a slippery slope. The people deciding to file for bankruptcy are elected public officials who can be removed from office and replaced with people uh, of different mind. But the city doesn't have the Federal Reserve. It can't print cash. Yeah. It has to pay its obligations. It needs to open schools after Labor Day. It needs to have police in the streets. It needs to pay for electricity and water. A judge is going to prioritize those obligations, and some people will get burned. Some people will lose their jobs, and some people will take a haircut. But the federal judge's job is to keep the city and its basic services operating in an efficient way. Yeah, you, know, you explain that in a way. We've had all these financial types analyzing they it. They can I, explain it? You did. Can you you did it in a way that I, I, I understood. Can you get me one of those cow jackets like your previous guest was yes, wearing? Yes, every guest gets one. If you get me Everyone. one, I will wear it on this show. I know my producer doesn't want to hear me say Done, that. done. It is done. <laughs> I will hold you that because it's all on digital tape.